right. Uh, anybody got any questions? Uh, how do I log in? Log in. Okay, yeah, let's talk about logging in. Uh, let me do a screen share for folks that are already here. Although, I don't know if you're already here, I don't know why you need to know. Uh, so, the way it should typically work is if you go to uh, clinkitlanguage.com and then, oops, not there. That's how you do everything. Uh, and under learning Clinkit, there's a number of little sub tabs that pop up. An intermediate Clinkit is the one we want. We scroll down a little bit, and then you should be able to say you can access our class by clicking here. That should launch it into Zoom, uh, either through your browser or if you have the application on your desktop, or if you have the app on your phone or tablet, it should take you there once you click that. It should ask you if you want to open it in the app. On that thing. And you should say yes, and in a if the world is spinning the right direction, then it poof, it, it poofs up in the right spot. Let me walk over and see if it's working on your end. That's it. Okay. So I went right to Zoom instead. Oh, okay. So now yeah, so then there's the here button. And, oh, sorry. Which I should have it. Now, he listed on the course. Hmm? He listed on the And who's Uhu? In my. It's red. I said, Ajak, eh, late Walter Soberleff. Ye, Yawak, ah. Ya, yak, eh, at ya, hengit, ani, ka, kud, si, te, at. Okay, wow. And. I'd like to know what that is and how the words work. Oh yeah, where, where did you find that? From the class handout at the beginning. Oh, oh great, okay. For sale. Oh. Wow. So it might be oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And he's got that page on here. So that's why it's... Yeah, there's some uh, things on the handout that aren't uh, translated. Yeah. Let's take a look at the... Well, you did, but we didn't know how... None of those things say sound? So this uh, whole conversation... Oh, let me open a couple of things in case anybody has a chat thing. And then I can see here. Let me zoom in on this. Nice. 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 A little cluttered here. There's something like that in the story. Yeah. So the passage uh, that's being referred to comes from a recording that is in Alice's collection, Jock. And let me. Hold on. And so I was listening to that, we listened to it in a class, and then I just went through and I, I just found this particular section. So, Kajakti is uh, Walter Sopla. And uh, we just want to acknowledge uh, Ross Sobolov. Uh, his celebration of life was yesterday, that's Walter's son. And we also want to acknowledge Kakwe. Um, Evelyn Hotch, who, who recently passed away, she's one of my language instructors, and she was just such a fun person to talk to in any language. She was, she was a lot of fun. She told me one day, and I said, huh, oh, you okay? She said, Yisukuge dasa wait 
Iqaini Qawiyya yakhwaka Magpie? Said Let me turn this She said Talks a lot Says nothing <laughs> so she she said, and you know, she's got such a good sense of humor. You know how to turn the sound off. <laughs> Sorry. Is it? It's down, but it's not off. Try. Go say something. I can still hear you. It's still going through there. You know how to turn the sound off? There's a switch on my way. Should be up there somewhere. Good ball, huh? I just turned it down. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. There's a thing that says disconnect audio on. I think that's it. Okay. We're getting a little feedback in the class. I think we got. Uh, and she had a great sense of humor, and she told me in Tlingit, I have a new name for you. And I said, Oh. And she said, Tsikaini. And I said, Magpie. And she says, Yeah. Talks a lot. Says nothing. And I thought it was, I thought it was so funny. <laughs> I just really laughed. Um, but there's a number of things that aren't translated that are on your syllabus, uh, just like clinket gems. I just like to leave them all over the place. Some of them I translate, some of them I don't. Uh, this one comes from, uh, this is uh, an excerpt of the speech. So, uh, George Ramos and Walter Soboloff are talking, and they go through a number of different subjects. And then, Maybe two thirds of the way through the video, Walter just gets really inspired and he starts just sort of really getting excited about the things that he's sharing. And so you can read uh, the English here. So I'll skip that. And he says, you did go away, ya yeez pustihi de sago at a ya cha away ya a cade ya pusana cock a knock ya cook on the yam yet agu yak a ye sing it a pusti ye tahwasak a yen away a knock ya hock on the yam a joey Kashkwan a kati sa wuk a kuk. Ya yak a ye at ye sing it on a ka kudze tee at. Ka a ka has was wunehe at. Kashkwan ye jidahu he hick. Kai sha shot. A aya a ka a ka has kudze tee. Ya ha shagun he. Ye aya ye aya a deca quati. Adeka koti ya gao ya yis kuuj ka acht yis kuuj ka acht hesh adet utletlet ka ha unachsati ye shingit ya ya uha. Ek e ya tsu atu ye wuti a koa a kokon ya gachtu ti hesh kashadeki at aya shige at aya ya gachtu ti. Ya hasha gunki, a kog has wu art, a kog has kuz a tea, a kog has wu neer, a jaya ya du uhan, ya ya gi. And it's just, it's amazing. And if, uh, you could find that recording uh, through the, the UAS page that has uh, the recordings on it, which we can sort of walk through how to get there. Uh, uas.alaska.edu 
scroll down to this little window section, hit left a couple times, and then we're talking conversation, view and listen for yourself. And then you could come down here, and here's one with Evelyn Hotch. Uh, we come down. There's cheese. Oh. Oh, you okay? Yeah, take care. But it was with uh, George Ramos. Oh, um, mm -hmm. it's on YouTube too, I think. Mm. Right there, fifty-four. Mm. And so they say this is why we are considered human beings. Yeah, why? And so, it, like these are, they're such fun things to work with too, because there's so much you can explore. Uh, in a section like this, um, and, and there's lots of things we could talk about later when we're looking more in depth at, at some of the verbs. This is, you know, so we've got, this is the way uh, respecting one another long time, you know, people respect each other long time ago, the way people respect one another, or honor, you know, uh, the, now what we call the new generation. Yeah, there's just so much good stuff in here. But then there's a little section, I think, right here, maybe. Yeah, you at the shingit on the kakuts at ye at this wonderful thing that was born on the world. And yeah, there's just so much good stuff in there. Anybody else got a question? If you were telling a story, not like a big, like just like I went to the store. Um, how would you mark this is the place where it was taking place? Uh, you mean like it was taking place in, like it was in Juno or something like that? Like if you were like, I ran into this guy at UAS, would you put anything at the end of UAS? Yeah, UAS. So okay. it would get a X apostrophe on the end. Cool. Yeah, U A S K O A. Blah blah blah. Anything else? Okay, I'll put this. Uh, I'll put this ex excerpt up there. Certainly check it out. Uh, I thought we. I know we left off on these questions. Actually, I wanted to do a little warm up activity. These are kind of fun. And uh, I'll share a link to this one as well. Uh, we got our oldest uh, child, we, when she was pretty young, we got her this set of uh, cards. And it's, or it's like little puzzle pieces. And you put them together, and they're opposites. They're like different things. And so, I was practicing them, you know, I was just going through them with, with her, she was a little baby. And I thought, oh, this will be fun. There's some of these things I don't know how to say, or I don't even know if I'm saying them right. So I took them to um, Kakwan Ish and Shakshani, and we just went through uh, this set of them. So we'll start with these, and, and as we move from sort of beginning to intermediate, we move from like learning names, memorizing phrases, to learning how to describe things. So we want to be able to describe things, we want to locate things, we want to talk about things that are happening. And so some of the ways that do help uh, to do this are by uh, going through and then, so there's some descriptive things that are in here. And, they're, and they had a lot of fun with this, like the recording of this is really, they're just laughing a lot. And so it was actually, I tried to make a little app out of it, but I don't know how to make apps, but maybe someday I will. Uh, but it was actually really hard to pull the audio because they're always laughing at the end of it, which is, which is fine. I guess I should just have it with them laughing because it's lots of fun. Uh, so anyways, so we'll just uh, we'll say these a couple times and look at the pictures. Uh, and then if you can, you want to go get one of these little puzzle sets. They're pretty cute. And then you would have the vocabulary for them too. Okay. Kaudzitich. 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 And so that means crooked, but it could also mean twisting. It was twisted. 
It could also mean it was wrung like a like a rag or something. Yadachun. 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 So that's uh, straight. Straight ahead. It's straight. It's also used to say like sing the vocables of the song. Shawatit. 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 So that is, uh, it's full of liquids. So it, it only works for liquids. There's a different one for solids. And it has to be actually full. And so like if they say, uh, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? It's katut day, right? So I'm thinking you, it gets pretty specific. It's either full or not. And then it can either be solids or liquids. But if it's empty, yeah. Two ago, if I can ask a question. Uh, does that have to do with like string? Because I see at the end, it, does anything to do with like. Well, string? no, but there's a related. Isikuge wasadu is sao klingit in a key. Do you know what a key is called? Wasadu is sao key. Katikha. So it's in there because it's the one that twists. Katikha, but tikh is rope, and that's a little bit different. Okay. Oh. So an empty container, a hukti. A hukti. A hukti. A hukti. A hukti. That one's a verb. That one isn't. It's just something that it sort of knows. Yayat. 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 It's long and usually a stick like or a rope like thing. Yakuwat. 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 Ye ku watch. Ye ku watch. And so it presents some interesting things, because like in English you'd say long, not long, or maybe short. So in this one, um, so ye yacht would be long. You could say kesh u yacht would be not long. But then ye ku watch is, it actually means it's too short. Too short, because it's a little tiny room. Ye gugank. Ye gugank. Ye gugank. Ye gugank. Ye gugank. It's for something to be small. Usually not a living thing. It's a little different for a living thing. Ye kugay. Ye kugay. Ye kugay. Ye kugay. Ye kugay. It's big. And for the, the first part, which is the negative, there are different ways to say that. Some speakers say place, some speakers say tes. Some speakers say hesh, some speakers say tish. It's just sort of a, I haven't figured out if that's kind of a regional thing. Uh, I have, Cyril George said tish, and so do uh, some speakers from Carcross. Uh, there was George, he, I think, he usually said hesh. He liked to say hesh, I think, mostly. Sue. Sue. So this one gets an exclamation point because it's a command. And you know, it means start driving or start going in the boat. Right? It's a command form. 
Khan. 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 Khishu e Khukuk. Khishu e Khukuk. Khishu e Khukuk. Khishu e Khukuk. And that, and Marge laughed after she said that. She said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> it means don't go. And you could probably say it could mean don't ever go, but it really just means don't go, right? So that's the red line. A hot hey day shutan. 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 The door is open. A hot utch do what tun. A hot utch should do what tun. A hot utch should do what tun. A hot utch should do what tun. A Kana, 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 Kana. Hind Yanakuk, Hind Yanakuk, Hind Yanakuk, Hind Yanakuk, Hind Yanakuk, Hind Yanakuk, Hind Usitah George really laughed at that one. That was fun. Shetkatsku. Shatkatsku. 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 So there's a yeti, and that's the little child. Katsku is like adolescence. So that's the difference between those two. Yeti. That's cool. Can you go back to the last one just so I can get the accent from them? Shut katsku. Shut katsku. And there are, so shut katsku is a little girl. And this is one I might sort of adjust. Like the speakers will give you stuff, but then sometimes you got to go back and, and consult with them. At katsku would mean like, an adolescent child, because you could say, "Yedakatsku" uh, would be a, a young boy, an adolescent boy. Yedakatsku, shatkatsku. Yedakatsku, shatkatsku. And then atkatsku would be just a child, a single child. Ka yedi. Ka yedi. Ka yedi. Ka yedi. It's more of a baby like child. Ka shishk. Ka shishk. Ka shishk. Ka shishk. Ka shishk. Ka. It's a verb. It could also be a noun, but in that case, it's a verb. Keudzigit. Kaozigit. On Kawu. On Kawu. On Kawu. On Kawu. On Kawu. On Kawu. Anashkide. 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 This one's in the Raven stories. They'll say Raven 
he wanted to be a poor person, and that's why he wouldn't he wouldn't be born on furs. They brought out all these nice furs, and he wouldn't. They had a midwife there, and she's like, "He's not coming. He's not coming." And then they put this moss down there, and then he he came out. So. How do wasai? 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 This is pretty fun. So, like, uh, you know, like, I don't speak English to my kids, and they were walking around with some friends of mine. Some friends, they took them for a walk, and they were speaking Tlingit with them. And one of them uh, said, one of my friends said, Khatkautu Wasai. My younger daughter turned to her older sister and said, What's Sai? And I thought that was so neat because she was asking about the verb root. And her older sister said, Sweaty, right? <laughs> which is right it's to perspire, right? Say what? 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 So that's for a person to be cold. Would they tuck? 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 She or he is wet. Ooh a hook. Ooh a hook. Ooh a hook. Ooh a hook. Dry. Would they take? Would they take? Would they take? Would they take? It's frozen. Would she saw? Would she saw? Would she it melted. Wuna, 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 Wuna. Yet seen, yet seen, yet seen, yet seen, yet seen, yet seen. Our claim. Our claim. Our claim. Our claim. A cutsco. A cutsco. A so as you keep studying Tlingit, you'll start just noticing things. Atlain is not a it's not a verb. Akatsku is not a verb. Wudlinet is a verb. Gl is the classifier. Wushakh is a verb. Sh is the classifier. Hadayin. 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 So that's there's no verb there. It's just like facing us, right? And we'll we'll get to what kinds of words some of these other ones are too. Hadakan. 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 Do we shot? 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 And this one, like, we had to just keep talking about. I was like, I don't know. Like, we don't really, because it was kind of like, I guess, caged and free, maybe in English. But then we just, like, the concept didn't really exist the same in Tlingit. So they came up with, uh, it can fly out of jail. <laughs> That's what that literally translates to. Uh, we'll do it in three parts. Ayes, 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 Die out of jail. 
Zait de ye. 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 Zait de Zait de ki keo de tet. I missed the pacifier, sorry. Zait de ki keo de tet. 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 Then also, like when, like so, if this k part wasn't there. Like if there was nothing there, the verb would be woodle tet. Woodle tet. But the K part pushes the W to, it pushes it to contract. So you end up with keudle, keudle. And it just becomes this one sort of sound. That's something that you're going to see. It happens regularly in Tlingit. Kuk shukat han. Cook shook cut hun. So, anybody know what the cook part is here? Box. Box. So the shook cut. In front of? In front of, right? So we know like ha shuka. It's the same word, right? But then shook cut, and that means like. She is there, like to be there, right? And then hun is stand, she or he is standing. So there's the verb. So there's noun, there's this relational word, and then a verb. So then we could start, you know, as we start learning more of these things, like in front of, behind, in, around, we'll start learning how to manipulate those so that you could say, She's standing near the box. She's standing in the box. She's standing behind the box. Cook eight hun. 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 Hook tuck cut hun. Hook tuck cut hun. Hook tuck cut hun. Okay. De tayeet hun. Oops. De tayeet hun. Let's try again. Sorry. De tayeet hun. De tayeet hun. De tayeet hun. De tayeet hun. They cannot hun. They cannot hun. They cannot hun. Kajuha ya anaskuk. Kajuha ya anaskuk. Kajuha ya anaskuk. Kajuka would be a wheelbarrow, shopping cart, that kind of cart. It just means the one that spins. Yakanajuk is like it's spinning. Kajuka ya anaskut. 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 That's to drag it by a handle. Dekinde. 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 Nach 
يا خوه كش يا خوه يا That's all of them. So there was a lot. I think there's 60 of them. So there's 30 sets. It's pretty, it's a lot of fun to just go through that with them. And then it's just sort of fun to think about some of these concepts too, because you could practice these. And then later, as you learn more about just how the language works, it'll start to reveal some things that are just in these little short descriptions. Would that be a essay? Is this a game? I think it's just like a little kid's puzzle, yeah. And then you put it together? Yeah, and so they just play like a matching game, kind of. Or is it just online? Is that like... No, it was, it was like a little... We found it at like a little uh, used kid's store. And we thought it was neat. And then I was just playing with, with my kid. And then I was trying to say, and then I realized there was somebody I didn't know how to say. So then I took it, I took pictures of them all. And then I took it to the elders. So I've, I've got these pictures. So I'll put this up uh, on, our, on our class website. And then this is what it looks like. You know, so it's the learning journey, play and discover opposites. I like it because there's no, there's no language on it whatsoever. So it like, you know, there's lots of things that you could do, I think, with it. OK. OK. There's no, no language on the cards? No, not then. So that's, this is what the cards look like. And they, they're puzzle pieces, and they fit together. So they're trying so the kids can try to match them. And so there's, and there's lots of things you could do. Which one is straight? Which one is crooked? Right? Where's the match for it? You know, there's different things you could do like that. Okay. So I think we were sort of talking about questions the other day. Uh, so we had, I think we did what? Uh, so we'll say, um, da sa. Da sa. Da sa. Da sa ya. Da sa ya. Da sa we. So these are things that you can, and you'll learn how to put these up, you know, so you could say like, dasa what, what do I see? You know, dasa, dasa way. What's walking around over there? And then the one that's like, which one of these? So there's like a, like, you know, there's a limited set. Dasa. And then the ah part, if you had a noun, that's where it would go. So if I had these different uh, pencils, and you, you know, and then there could be more on it after that. So there's a, a few of them where something can go in between the question part and the sa. And this is just something that we'll sort of, we'll just notice them. You'll see them or pop up now and then. Uh, if you're going to ask who, adusa. 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 So you could say, who is your mother? Adusa itla. Adusa itla. And then you, you could have different verbs. Adusa e'in akawani. Who told you about that? And then there's another, there's a variation of this one you might hear, which is a dooch sa. And a dooch sa would say, who did the verb? Right? So that's getting pretty specific. Right? So a dooch sa, a wacha, a khati, who ate my fish? Right? So then the where. Is this one right here. This one is a, a slightly different because it likes to have a suffix on it. Not all the time, but most times. So you might hear people say, Gooksa. 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 Where is it located? And you could say, Gudesa. 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 
Where is it going? Kudaksa. 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 Where did it come from? And then you might hear people say, Gusu. 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 Where is it at? Right? Gusu Wegao. Gusu Ikla. Gusu Wae. Right? So this is the, the where thing. And there was an elder. Um, well, we'll get to this other one. There's these other things you could put in front of it, too. And uh, he was leaving. He got on his four-wheeler, and he was taking off. It was whoosh I said, I said, see you later. And he turned around, and he said, Chaguksa, wherever. And then he just took off. <laughs> That's really cool. So this one is how many? Unsa. 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 And that's another one where something can go in between the question marker. Undana sawe ichi wu. How much money do you have? Right? Uh, what else might we count? Unkitsawe uh, yisitin. How many killer whales did you see? And so that's how this one, it's a just it's putting it into numbers. And if you're from Yakutat, when in the future, specify when in the past, and you have to pick one or the other. You're from Yakutat, Gutksa. Good Then there's three related ones, but they're different. So the first one is for what, but it's sort of like for the benefit of what, or like, let's say I was uh, uh, cooking something. You were asking, who am I cooking it for, or what is it? You know, it's it's going to be like given to something, or it's going to benefit something. So that one you would say, dot yisa, dot yisa, dot yisa, dot yisa, dot yisa. And then the next one is like to go after something, right? So like, good day sa yani good. Where are you going? Hun dake hiti de yen chagut. I'm going to the store. Da dot kasa. What for? What are you going after, right? Dot kasa. And then the last one is just a straight Y. Wanaksa. 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 And then as we sort of learn more Shlikit, you'll start seeing how to put these together with other things, right? Where is the bathroom? Uh, why are you leaving? Why are you crying? Why why'd you yell at me? You know, I want to, like, I really, we're going to a dark place. Um, the other thing that you can do with these is just with the, the question marker and the sa. And then if you put cha, right before it, and that it just changes the meaning. So dasa is what? But if I say cha dasa, that is whatever, and then cha da kasa, whichever one, cha wasa, however, cha uh, asa, whoever, cha guksa, wherever, however many, whenever, in the future, uh, you know, the, the last three, it doesn't work quite as well. So, but that's one thing you can add to it to make it into the blank ever, right? And so, like, it's that to my kids. I was like, whatever you want is going to happen. Just say it and think it, and then I end up eating their broccoli. <laughs>
Um, and if you put Kleich in front of it, now that has kind of the opposite sort of effect. So Dasa is what? Cha Dasa, whatever. Kleich Dasa, nothing. Right? And then you say Kleich uh, Dasa, none of them. Uh, that one has its own special meaning, and it just means it's okay. Kesha, nobody. Kesha, nowhere. Kesha, uh, none of them, right? And so the, that's just kind of an extra sort of fun twist on these as you sort of see them, hear them, start using them. Uh, but it's just building questions is a kind of important part of of language, right? I didn't, you need to clarify something. Who did that, right? And that kind of stuff. Can you use uh, wanach as like, like if you said like, kachwasaku uh, wanach? Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. Well, so you'd say kachwasaku wanach sawe khan dutu yeyati. I don't know why he or she is angry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you can just learn how to, you just start stacking them up like that. Right, so there's a verb. Kechwasaku. Wanachsawe. Blank. Right, I don't know why. And then you could have any kind of verb. Kechwasaku. Wanachsawe. Neshtewuku. I don't know why he went all. I was winning all his money and gambling. Okay. Uh, and then I think I got some examples, but maybe we'll come back to that some other time. So now we start learning some names for things in beginning Klinget. This is all like the first kind of chapter of, of the beginning Klinget. And so, uh, and what these, as you're sort of, as we're reviewing this, as you're teaching this event, you know, to other people, the, one of the sort of the ways that beginning Klinget works is it starts to introduce some useful words but then you'll notice none of them have some of the really hard sounds in them, the real difficult sounds for English learners, speakers. Uh, and so we go through and sort of um, just learn some names, and we also learn some phrases. Dasaya, uh, tasawe, dasawe, tasaya. And there's a bunch of drills you can do with someone holding something, uh, the teacher holds something, everybody else has something else, or you're handing something around. And you're really drilling like aya awe, aya awe, because ya is right here, we is over there. So that's what we're kind of doing with beginning Klinget, is just starting to ground some of those concepts of space, as asking and answering questions, and learning the names for things. Then we move into gusu, where is it? Then we get yadu, we do. You can have you do, right? And you can say, you know, Gusui Ka, Neshuhu, she's at home, right? And then you'll learn how to do those, apply those same patterns to other things. The one thing to remember with Gusu is you can't ask that about a verb. It's a verbless phrase. It's just, where is, where is the, that thing? Gusu, uh, Gusui Kari, where is your car? Gusui Kate, where is the dog? Gusu whatever. Uh, where's my money? And so that's, that's what beginning Klinket is, is doing with chapter one. So as we sort of close out chapter one, the way that I'd like to do that is I'll show you some pictures and somebody tell me if you know what that thing is called without looking it up. Starting with this one. Uh, yeah, some of them are kind of hard to tell. This is a Tlekakinach birch. That's birch. Uh, it literally means it's bark, uh, but it's a specific. That's just birch bark, because it's really thin. And it means 
uh, around it is literally what it means. Yeah, the, older. The, thick, the, the trees with the thicker bark, there's a different name for that bark. The birch don't look like that. Tuss. 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 So, you know, if you're still if you're still learning these, there's lots of uh, drills and, and practicing you could do with just remembering the names of, of these particular things. what? what? This thing here. Ah. Uh, uh, Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. In this direction, it's south. Ich ki. Yeah, what? Ich ki. 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 We did not use like any sort of what do they call them? Cardinal directions? We didn't use that at all. Technically, Naki is northward, but it also means upstream. Ichki means south, but it's also downstream. And then Dok is out to sea, and Dok is to the inland. Right. But everything was always, it always referenced where the ocean was, even for inland Tlingit people. Te Shay Shay, a yow de tea. A That's a mink. Now, we do, we get our, 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 our we gotta really learn our weasels. Like, okay, well, we'll work on that and I'll tell you my short story. Nukshiyan. Yeah, uh, where? Nukshiyan. 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 In some places they call it Nukshiyan. Nukshiyan. Most think it's say Nukshiyan. I, I can't remember if I figured out who says Nukshiyan. Uh, but there's another one. So there's Nukshiyan, Nusk, Da, Kuch. Then I guess it's Ach as well, right? So really trying to get our uh, these critters down. And they're all probably like cousins or something, right? So there's a mink, a marten, uh, an ermine, uh, a marmot, and a wolverine. Otters. The otters, kushta, right? So very similar types of things. And then we were up in the, the visitor center up by the glacier here in Juneau. And they've got these, this little area where they've got like, it looks like a little river and there's a salmon in the, you know, what looks like water. And then there's all these little prints. And I was talking to my, you know, I said, look at these, look at these footprints here. Uh, I think they might be Martin footprints, but we'll ask the people here. And so a, a ranger came up and was like, what kind of animal is this? I'm like, I don't know. And then he just like walked away from us. <laughs> so, like, the, the knowledge is in danger. I guess if you like, 
if you see them regularly or you trap them or something. But yeah. Anyways, that's that guy. And then there was one version of the Raven stories where Raven marries the lady who sat on the tide. And af after he gets her to release the tide, he marries her. And then they take off. And then at some point, she picks up this. Well, this is the guy who helped Raven at first, this Nukshiyan. So he tried, they say, he went down among the bull kelp. But he couldn't get down to those knees, the sea urchins. He got that mink to help him to go down and to get those sea urchins for him. But then after he got that lady to release the tide by uh, hitting her on the bottom with this empty urchin shell, uh, he married her and then she took that mink with her. And then there are several stories later they saw these killer whales rented with all this seal fat in their canoes. And his wife wanted some, so she wrapped that little mink up like a baby and bit its ear off and it started crying. And those killer whales said, why is your baby crying? And she said, he's just so hungry. And they said, give him some of this seal fat. She said, okay, and then she just ate it all up. <laughs> That's a pretty fun story. All right, well, uh, let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll keep doing these. And then we'll just sort of walk through the next chapter of beginning to get. Do you guys have any questions, too? Okay. And how an extra. So this lists the, the questions that are kind of in the first two chapters of the beginning Tlingit workbook. So really it's just, as we get into this sort of question and answer drill, uh, what beginning Tlingit does is just, what's this? That is. What's that? This is. Right? So you can just sort of, you're learning how to just, with the language, talk about where something is in relationship to you. So if it's here, you'd say, aya. If it's over there, you'd say, awe. Aya. Awe. And the other thing is it's just introducing this dasa, the what sort of question. And so that's what that question and answer is. Dasa ya, blank oe. Right? Dasa we, blank aya. The next question it introduces is where is it? Gusu. So it's gusu keys, ya do keys, gusu keys, we do keys. It's there, it's here or there. Uh, as we get a little bit further into intermediate clinket, we'll learn how to say things like, um, he's not here. Kleshyat hu. And then we'll say, it's not here. Or I don't, you know. So the other thing is there's a little suffix on here. And there's a, a few different types of suffixes. And there's one group of them that has to do with location. And this is the one we've already heard day. So, you know, day is towards, I guess I'll go towards. Dach is away from. And then the u uh is just to be located there. Right? So that's sort of in the u uh one, we start to see right here. So when we ask this question, what do you have? Everybody say, dasa ijiwu. Dasa ijiwu. Dasa ijiwu. Dasa ijiwu. Dasa ijiwu. And what are we going to have? M&M's. M&M's? So then there's I have, and it's not a verb, right? This is not a verb. So what we notice with the first set of questions, there's no verbs in any of them. Because then they're, they're easy to sort of say and to answer. Where the one part, it does get tricky, though, if you want to say, so we'll say, I have a pencil. 
But how would I say, I don't have a pencil? Tesh ach g. So the w part falls off, right? Because that's a suffix to be located somewhere. G is not my hand, it's my possession, right? It's not in my possession. So you'd say, Kesh kuhida ach g. I don't have a pencil. Kesh dana ach, kesh dana ach g. I don't have any money. Kestasa achji. I don't have anything. <laughs> Composing my next, you know, sad song. But <laughs> so that's that's how the G woof part works. But then, you know, what we also start to learn is you say achji wu, achji wu, achji wu, achji wu, so now this starts getting us into this one, two, three type of a conversation, right? Me, you, this other person we're talking about, right? Saying good things, I'm saying okay things about myself. I don't want to brag, but I don't want to gossip either. I'm saying good things about you, I'm saying good things about that person, right? And so that's when we start saying first person, second person, third person. We start introducing that sort of concept, and then the next thing we'll do, we'll do later is pluralize it. So we go, and then there's different ways we can use these things. Me, you, her, mine, yours, hers, us, y'all, them, ours, y'alls, theirs, right? So this is what we sort of, we start to walk through and just start to introduce more and more things. And we start showing how those things get used. And this is one of the places that we do that with, what do you have, right? And then later we can ask, do you have, who has, and stuff like that. And then we get to the, the first verb, which is to see something, okay? Let's go back to Hatter. Nukshiyan Yataqa Good Awa Good 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 Pair the pair of them Wushyai 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 and that could be translated as faces together. And that's how you'd say like a pair. I don't know how you'd say three of kind. Y'all are poker terms, figure out. All right. Naske achashugu. Una. 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 The one that shoots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but too many times. Yai, 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 E Yana eight. 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 Yana eight.
Expert Mouser. Wherever you're from, that's how you say. Cocaine, 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 Sock, Wasus, 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 Yak, 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 Seek, 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 Donna, Donna. Donna, 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 Kawoot, 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 this Kawoot, 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 Kishish. Yeah, where? Kishish. 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 On. 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 And we've got to remember we don't use English tone and clink it, so we can't say geesh. Cost, 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 um, is that what we call the one that sits on the top of the rocks? Nu shakakawu. Man on top of the fort. Yain. 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 
Gooch. 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 No, sir. Yeah. I don't know why it's black behind you. Nadak. 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 Kushta. 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 For Kushta, is that for any otter, like sea otter, land otter? It's only land otter. The sea otter is yacht. Unless you're from Yakutat, then it's yacht. Is the is the da in Kush, is that related to like weasel or? That's a good question. question. Yeah, and it could be like around something. It seems to suggest that there's some kind of verb in there, maybe, but I haven't really looked. I'm too scared to take it apart. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with that. One. But yeah, that could be. That's something. I don't know why I never looked at that. I'll see if I can find anything on it. Douche. 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 Kutia. 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 Kanaist. 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 Shakiat. 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 Do we know how that one works? There's like three parts that are put together in there. Sha is a head. He on top. He is on top. At is thing. At is a thing. Thing on top of the head. So at you're gonna see it. Just all over the place. Naat. 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 Jaji. 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 And for inland trinkets, there's a bunch of different words for a bunch of different kinds of snowshoes, <clears throat> including one that I think is called Qaqjini, which is like a lynx foot. Shao. 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 Shayena, 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 and it translates to the one that anchors by its head. Tawei, 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 Tawei. In the orange dictionary, this one and Genwu were, were backwards. And then a long time ago, like, they were getting clinkets to translate, like, the Bible. And they kept translating, like, Tawei for sheep. But, like, it was totally different than, because it wasn't, like, a, it's a different type of sheep. You can't herd these ones, right? So then as they were sort of talking about the Bible to other clinkets, they are like, what? Like, what are you trying to do with those mountain sheep? <laughs> Tana, 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 Kayuka uti. Kayuka uti. Kayuka uti. 
And that word oot, you guys know what that means? Octopus sucker. It's an octopus sucker, right? So that's what this guy is named after. Mm -hmm. Saint. 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 On quay, 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 on Speak, 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 that's E. That's E. That's E. Hoots, 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 hoots. What's that? Cake. That's Issa. It's Issa's fabric for like a canvas or a tarp. Hwazda. Yeah, well, hwazda. 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 So, Sisa is fabric, and it means the one that blows around. So what would Sisa hit be? A tent. A tent. So what would Hwasda hit be? A wall tent. A wall tent. Yeah, a what? A what? Wall tent. A wall tent. You know, like you build a frame for it, and then it's got the canvas. <laughs> Go. 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 Gah, 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 gah. Oh, now we get some pronouns. So then we get to this point where we start learning these pronouns in sets of three. And then we also start learning that there are different types of pronouns. So the first type we learn are the types that just stand on their own. So in this case, you could say, if someone says, Gusu wa eh, how do you answer that question? Ya du chat. So you see, wa eh, chat. And so, how would I translate Gusu wa eh? Where are you? Where are you? How would I translate Ya du chat? Here I am. Here I am. So, how would I say, Where is she? So then I would, how would I say, here she is? Right? So what we see here is we're using, once you've established which set of pronouns you're using, those are the ones you're going to use. But what's the first, second, third? So, and then we've got first, second, and third. So first person is like I'm you're talking about yourself, or I'm talking about myself. Second person is I'm talking to you. Third person, I'm talking to him or her. And so we, we see these when we talk, when we learn how to like write fiction. If something's written in the first person, I was walking down the street at night. If it's written in the second person, which is pretty rare, you were walking down the street at night. And if it's written in third person, 
he was walking down the street at night. What we're going to figure, what we'll see though, is whenever we translate something from Clinkit into English, one of the things of English is you have to pick a gender. You know, he or she, I guess you could just keep saying they, but it's just sort of, it kind of forces you to pick one, right? I guess you could say a person, but for Klingit, <laughs> it's just she or he, right? So we start with these ones. The only way that these pronouns are used is to say gusu and yadu, or if, you know, someone says, someone knocks on the door, and you say adu sowe, you say khataya, right? So just, or to specify who we're talking about. Right? And so it's not used that much, but it, this is the first set that we learn. And we learn them in threes. So we'll learn three, and we'll learn the plurals, which would be uh, us, y'all, and them. And then we'll, we'll learn some other ones. There's quite a few others, but we start with those sort of, those sets of threes, and we add three more. And then quite a bit later, we'll look at some other ones, because Clinkett's got some fun ones. I'm not clear on the wa'eh or second. So wa'eh is you, and we call that second person. So I'm saying, I say, gusu wa'eh. Where are you? Especially if you're talking on the phone. Yeah. So the, the wa'eh part is you. What part, what part might not be making sense? So here's how you might use these ones. One is to just really specify who you're talking about, right? So I might say, Khataya Khone, Wa'ekhu'a Shchak. And so sometimes I'm talking about like, who I might be talking about, right? Or I'd say, uh, is that you? Right, so really what these translate to is me, you, him, or her. Me, you, him, or her. They're not, you know, as, as you sort of listen to Thinkit and use Thinkit, you'll see that they're not used a whole lot, right? Um, and, and especially the wa'eh one. But like, for example, um, I might say, uh, that's used quite a bit. Like, and so would take anything that you just asked me and I could ask it back to you with that. Like, I'm okay, how about you? And then um, the other ways are gusu and yadu. Gusu wa'eh. And so they'll use that one quite a bit. Like. We're all taking a group photo, but kubuch is not here. Kubuch, kusu wa'eh, right? And just to sort of say, where are you? And so that's, that's how those three work, right? Chet, wa'eh, huh. Okay, again? Okay? Almost. Yeah. Uh, there's something confusing to me about the way you're showing it, and because um, uh, chet and wa'eh, they switch, you know, the, the person who's asking, Gusu uh, wa'eh, that's the first person they're asking. They're not you. Mm -hmm. they, they're, and then the person who answers is you, but they're saying, Hut. So the, they are, so we're talking now, so. The first, second, third always refers to who is talking, right? So if I said, Gusu, Gusu Chat, where am I? Gusu Wa'eh, where are you? And so it's, it's I'm addressing you, but then it's that second person pronoun, which we'll see later, like, Ich I love you. You're, and so... And the, but the first person is using the second person. Yes. And so that, but they always, these always refer to who's ever, whoever is talking. I think I don't like the triangle, but okay. you do. You do? <laughs> we do, we do, we can do, you can, well, yeah, we, we can rethink it, we can talk about it more. But I don't have a, I don't have a, 
I don't have a, a way to do it. So okay. Uh, and so the way we, we sort of uh, start working on these and we start to sort of thinking about this sort of concept, self, you, the one I'm talking to, and then him or her, the one we might be talking about, right? And this is a big part of communication, right? And, 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 the, and there's just certain things that we're going to communicate this way. These ones are the first ones we learn, but then we find that we don't use them that much at all. My son, my two-year-old, likes to say, shkahadi wa'e. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy, right? So I can say, shkahadi hat, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of his favorite words right now. Nice. But it comes out chicken hardy. <laughs> oh, chicken hardy. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So we kind of point, and if you don't like pointing, you use your hand. I don't know. Uh, but we just do it as an exercise. So we say, chut, 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 chut. And you, you pick someone, it could be me, but it's got to be that same person. And you'll say, wa'eh, 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 wa'eh. And then keep looking at that same person. Don't look at the other person you're talking about. And so one of the keys as we start sort of bringing this into our mind is we say, chet, wa'eh, huh. You're still talking to that same person. So I like to say, we're saying great things about Kubu, but if I look at her, then she'll know I'm saying great things, and it'll kind of go to her head. Be like, so that I don't look over, because you don't say me, you, her, right? Because then that's just a little awkward. Uh, where is she? Right, so I could say, Kuwuch, Gusuhu. And then you say, Weiduhu, there she is. Um, but, and so these ones aren't used a whole lot. The, the, other way, the other way I might say them is I might say, uh, uh, I like uh, coffee. Okay, if I want to say a sentence, I like coffee, but she likes tea. Kahwe Achtuwasaku Hukoa Chayu Dituwasaku. Right? And so they're really, the, the ways you see them most often is if you need to clarify who we're talking about. Right? We're not going to see them a whole lot. The, the possessive ones we'll see way more because that's how you do all the kinship things. Uh, a lot of verbs are sort of tied to them. But these ones, we'll do all three in a row. Chet wa'eh hu. Chet wa'eh hu. Chet wa'eh hu. Chet wa'eh hu. Then when we get into possessive, or we might call them relational, this would be my pencil, your pencil. Her pencil, my hand, your hand, her hand, my mom, your mom, her mom, right? And so that's how this one is used. And it could also, this is one you'll see sometimes with like wanting and like having feelings, like I feel good. And you'll say, ach tu wu, e tu wu, du tu wu. And this is where it gets a little tricky, where the h switches to du, the chet switches to ach, the wa'e switches to i. Okay? So we started with chet wa'e h. Chet wa'e h. Chet wa'e h. Talk about hands, because body parts are a little bit easier than. We'll learn how to possess things. That, that's coming. But for now, you don't need any possessive markers on a hand unless it gets removed. Ach jin. Ijin. Ijin. 
du jin. Du jin. Ach jin. Ach jin. I jin. I jin. Du jin. Du jin. And when you see this little uh, tilde guy, that means it could be i or e. But if you go to Teslin, they like to say e every time. E tla. Right? And so this is how you do all of the kinship stuff. My mother, my father, my son, my uncle, my grandma, my, right? The ach is mine. I is your. Du is his or her. And, the, and it, this is where when we start conjugating verbs, people, they, they like to throw some of these in there sometimes. And they, they just get a little bit mixed up sometimes. Like they'll say, uh, ach yak e, where it should be chat yak e. Or they'll say, uh, do yak e, where it should just be yak e, right? And so, but now we'll start sort of seeing how to use these. And then what we'll do, we'll probably do it next week, is we'll just learn how to use, how to uh, possess things. I have a question. Hmm? When we're learning um, the possessive, how come we don't learn the possessive marker right away, like ach, jinn? Or is it... Just say normal, but when you say when you put that, that's a good question. Suffix, or is it a possessive? It's a possessive suffix, and so okay, we'll just do it then. Fine. <laughs> Fine. I'm just wondering. It's very confusing. Like I just learned Achjin. Now I gotta add this possessive marker. Right. Does it get a possessive marker though? It's still attached to you. Yeah. 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 Yeah
pluralizing sound. They're, they're pluralizing a noun. And in English, are they the same sound? Right? So this one is cats. And if I wanted to write this one like we're actually saying it, it would be Z. And then bus says also be Z. So why would these, if we were to write English the way it sounds, so now we've got three different ways, so we say, okay, there's actually three different ways to pluralize something. And you, you know which one to use, right? You don't say dogs, and you don't say cats. What's the, what's the rule? Or what are the rules? Well, it's a voice, it ends in a voiceless consonant, but it's sound after it's a voiceless. Yes, we have a linguist among us. So if it's voiced at the end, then the S is voiced. Uh, and if it's not, then it's not, right? So when you, if you put your hands right here on your neck, you can feel when your vocal cords are on. And you go, cats, dogs. That's it. Vocal cords are on at the end, they stay on. They're off, they stay off. If it ends with some kind of S sound, you've got to put a vowel between it so that you can hear. And then if a vowel has a voice, voice sound, so then you keep your voice on. That's the rules for pluralizing in English. And also for possession. It, it's the exact same set of sounds, right? So then you can say it's the bus's dogs, right? It's the dog's buses, right? So Thingit has similar things. But we're just going to walk through how you possess something in Thingit. But to, to do that, we'll start sort of looking at suffixes onto nouns, okay? So when you put a suffix onto nouns, there's certain suffixes that you can use. Some of them we talked about having to do with direction. De, dach, nach, and we're going to learn those. But then there's some that you could put onto a noun that some, sometimes have meaning or sometimes show a relationship. So the ones that have meaning is you could make things small. The way you make things small is by putting this sound at the end. So how would we translate hate? Small house. Small house. Cake. Little dog. Little dog. Such. Do we know what such is? I don't have them here. I have them near Huna. We're probably not, or maybe not near Huna, maybe they're a little further north. They have them all over in the interior. They run across the highway. Sashk is a ground squirrel. So Sashk would be little ground squirrel. And when you put, when you put suffixes on to think at words, sometimes you're going to get these double consonants that are kind of hard, like that. You're going to get that sound. Sashk. So everybody say, Sashk. And then, What is that? Yes, little swan. Right? Shlek. What that one? Snapper. Little red snapper, little rockfish. This is, if you ever go to Chilkoot Lake and you're looking at beautiful Chilkoot Lake and you look to your right, there's a mountain there. That mountain is called Tlekuk, little red snapper. So the other thing you can do with the suffix is you can put a plural marker on there. Now, Klingit does not, you don't have to say Kleich dusch, dech dusch. It's just dech dusch. You don't have to pluralize if you're counting them. You pluralize if there's more than you can easily count, or just to really just say a lot of them, a bunch of them, right? So that's how Klingit pluralization works. So you don't have to pluralize all the time, uh, but the, you know, but to do that, you're going to put this sound on the end. So 
how would I translate? Hitch. Houses. Cage. Dogs. Sashk. Round squirrels. Cooked. Swans. Flakk. Snappers, red snappers, rock rock fishes. <laughs> yes, the next question. Well, how do you have plural and little? You cannot combine these two. So what we also start learning at this phase in Shingit is when you get into suffixes and stuff, sometimes there's there's like a little slot and you can only pick one thing from there. So the k and the k. It's one or the other. What if you have a bunch of little things? <laughs> then you get Kesani. Kesani. So how would we translate hit Kesani? Kate Kesani. Little dogs. Sashk Kesani. Little ground squirrels. Book Kesani. That one's fun. Book 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 Kesani. Little swans. Shlek Kusani. Little red snappers. How come it's a U instead of a I? Yes. So there's the other thing is when we start using suffixes in Shingit, we have to pay attention to a couple of things. Is the word open or closed? And what do you guys think open and closed means? Vowels or Yep, open it ends with the vowel, closed it ends with the consonant. That's going to play a factor for a, a number of different things. And there's some languages like Hawaiian where they don't allow closed endings. Right? Your name is Bill, we'll call you Pila. Right? Uh, and so, then there's another thing which is a rounded ending. So if the word ends with a W, or has a W, uh, actually has a W at the end, that means that one will be a U. Has a question? Um, if you were going to add one other level to, like, like the swans, if they were baby swans, small baby swans, would both the yaki and the gok um, get diminutive pluralized? No, you would use a verb. I would say yeksukinki gok yetki. So yeah, because then it starts, you're just trying to and this is what we find, and this is what, there's some linguists who like to do this stuff too, and they'll say, uh, how much stuff can you put in a sentence? And they found that there's, there's a definitive end. Like, he was walking down the street eating an apple, talking to, you know, trying to really drag it on and on. But same thing here, there's, if you wanted to sort of add more, like say, oh, well, what if they're babies and this, then you would just put a verb in front oh, of it. Oh, like them. small puppies, like a whole bunch of small puppies. Why using you? Like, you'd have to break that out. Yeah, because the yetki is already on there. And so you'd, you'd have to say yeksi genki, keich yetki. So don't use that X and X versus one. Oh, I see. But the I, other one has the X and then. Oh, yeah, it has the nine. I, I still don't get it. Okay. So we, we have rounded endings, which is basically if it ends with a W, it's rounded. Okay. What's so the then that suffix will be a U. Instead of an if it's on. rounded, it'd be you. Yes. And this is, we're going to see this when we get into the possessive suffix next week. We're going to say, ach ga wu. But then you'd say, ach ke dle. So it's usually going to be an I. But if it's rounded, it'll switch to a U. And then the other thing with these Kesani ones, there's some really cool words and some cute words that have come out of that. So atcha is food. Atcha isani, snacks. 
Te is a rock. Tehisani, tehisani, pebbles. Right. So there's there's some really cute words that are these kisani things, right? Because there it's a whole bunch of little things. That's always cute, unless they're gremlins and you feed them after midnight or whatever. <laughs> I had heard shiadahini used with the noun. Do, does the no, noun become plural or does it say stay singular like counting? Oh, like you'd say shiadahini kate. Uh -huh. That's how you'd say that. So it stays singular. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I would do it. But then you would just say kate if I'm just saying several dogs. Because it basically you pluralize it if you're just saying there's several of them. It doesn't matter how many. Shiadahin is many things that have heads. Okay, that was good. We kind of went into the, it was fun. But so, so typically we use this stuff later because you start introducing all these rules and these different logics and rounded endings. And so it's sort of like when we do beginning clink it, we don't like to pull that curtain back too much. I, don't, I, I think there's nothing wrong with it, but we usually just sort of try and build up and build and, and so. Because otherwise people are like, what? And then we end up mm -hmm. confused. But I think it's fun. Because then the, the rule, when you start studying these rules and stuff, you learn a rule, and you're like, I don't get it. But then we do a whole bunch of examples. You're like, OK, I get it. Because then a lot of it is sound. Like, so if, if it has a rounded ending, we're going to go, oh, because oh, we've got a rounded mouth already. But if it's not, we go, eh, because then I is back here, U is in the front. So basically, the language you usually find the easiest way to do the thing. Uh, I might be teaching the class from Anchorage. We'll see. Just show up here. Those of you online, show up the same spot. And uh, I might be on the screen. We'll figure it out. I might get someone to come in. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Have a good weekend. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bye, Echa. Nah.